guys, welcome to my new video. So excited about this one, like next level excited. All right, Dollar General has their own makeup brand now, exclusive to Dollar General. It's called Believe Beauty. Now there's a certain part of the population that is very familiar with Dollar General and Casey's Pizza, and you are my people. Tiny backstory here, I grew up in a town of 1,200 people where shopping wise, there is a small grocery store. We did get a Casey's, and just before I graduated high school, we got a Dollar General, and that was a big deal because it was 30 miles east or west to get to any more significant shopping, you know, like Walmart or Target. Sephora or Ulta, forget about it. But you knew you had that Dollar General option if you needed some random thing pretty quick. And as far as beauty goes, Dollar General has, you know, a limited selection of CoverGirl, Maybelline, maybe a little Wet n Wild, some LA Colors, but now they're going to be offering this whole brand of everything under $5. And I've been playing with it, and I'm going to bring you my review and try on today. Now, even to this day, I live in a town that only has a Dollar General. I mean, I'm closer to more stuff overall. It's not as big of a deal to, like, get to a Walmart or get to somewhere else. But, like, Dollar General will keep haunting me all my life, I feel like. And it's just cool. I was just really excited. The way this came about for me, I got an email, seems like a couple months ago, like, giving the heads up, Dollar General is going to have its own exclusive line. And I was like, yes, I'm here for it. Let me know when it comes out. And then a lot of time passed and I didn't hear anything else and I thought, well, maybe they've forgotten about me or something and I'm gonna need to be stocking my stores for this. So I've been looking and trying to see if it's been out yet. I think some people probably have seen it in their Dollar General stores, but I haven't yet. I feel like one of the stores, I can see a space that's practically been cleared for it. Like I can tell where it's gonna be, but it's not out yet. And then several days ago, I go ahead and get like two very generous boxes of PR for this line in my mail and I'm like, yes, I'm so excited. But doing a little more research on the brand online, I can see this brand has a freaking peachy corrector. Like how full circle would my life be if I end up finding my favorite peachy corrector from Dollar General of all places. But as you'll see as I go through the application, there are certain things I don't have. While I have a lot of things, there's some things I just don't have and I tried up until yesterday to track down a few extras in my stores, but it's just not out yet. But I didn't want to wait any longer on the video, number one. And number two, I will totally be following up on anything, you know, additional that I try. Like, this is not going to be a brand that's just here today, forgotten tomorrow. No, not for my channel. I am on this. First things first, we've got foundation here, and um, this is going to be a $5 foundation. It's called Skin Finish Foundation, medium to full coverage, they say. I've used the ivory, and I feel like it's a little too light, and then I also have this warm vanilla shade that was sent my way, and I feel like my actual shade falls somewhere between these two. So, what I'm going to do today Today is do a small pump of the ivory and a small pump of the warm vanilla. I'm really sorry I can't like just demo one solid working shade, but if you do have this in a store and you think you're about my skin tone and you're wondering what works, go between these two and I bet it will work out. But consistency wise, this seems like a really just typical liquid foundation, right? Um, it's not too thin, but it's not super thick either. I kind of question the whole full coverage, but I do think it offers some very reasonable coverage. And as far as staying power, I did not get oily in the least with this on my skin yesterday. I actually even felt just a hint dry. So I think if you're a normal to dry skin, maybe really prep your skin well, moisturize underneath. And they have several brushes, not a lot of brushes, I think four total from the line. And one of them is sort of this um, buffing brush. I'll put the exact name and all the exact details in the description below but it feels really nice. It's a very nice size. It reminds me a lot of something similar by e.l.f. that has been out. It's a slightly more mobile version of the Sigma brush that has been cut this way. By mobile, I mean the bristles seem to spread a bit more and really move a little bit more across the skin. It's a really pleasant experience, you know, blending out that foundation. But I just, I don't see this as a full coverage foundation. I see this as just a really, really typical medium coverage, like kind of the experience I had with L'Oreal True Match, you know? Because while my skin is very nicely evened out, and yes, the mix of those two shades was so much better than just the ivory alone on me, I'd call this a solid medium coverage for me, but not full. Now, as far as concealer goes, they do make a concealer, they make a color corrector, as I said, um, 
Two Tones of Peachy Corrector, I believe, which I do not have on hand. I'm so sorry about that, and I will be tracking it down as soon as I can, but I will be um, at least staying with the price point here with my e.l.f. 16-hour camo concealer. I know that's five bucks and is amazing, um, so we're going to use that today with a couple dots around here, a little out here for brightening, a bit around the nose to tackle redness right up here because somehow that's a magical spot for concealer for me and a little on the chin. I am so jazzed up about doing this video though like my first thought waking up today was I get to shoot the Believe Beauty video. And no this is not sponsored none of that. Um, I did receive the makeup like I said in PR and I just have a natural enthusiasm for Dollar General <laughs> but but you guys know there are no gimmies on my channel like if I don't like it I'll tell you. I think there are some good but not great things happening but there are also some really great things. I'm using my flat brush because sometimes I kind of like that type of brush for this really full coverage concealer. I mean, when I'm just applying a couple dots and then I really want to get a lot of mileage out of those couple dots and make it spread, a flat foundation brush can work really well. I remember it ending up being like my favorite way to apply Tarte Shape Tape, and this is honestly really, really similar to Shape Tape. Feeling super confident with my e.l.f. concealer on. I do love that product and would really recommend it. I promise we're gonna get into a stretch here where I've got like everything I need, but they did not send a loose powder, and they do make a loose powder, so there'll be another thing that's on my radar to try, but I've got my Maybelline fit me in fair and I'm just going to use that to gently just a little bit of product on my brush like teeny teeny amount here and I'm just going to gently set my under eye. The concealer really doesn't demand a lot of setting powder and definitely the foundation does not either so I'm not going to be applying a lot of this. I'm just going to keep it to my t-zone and then we'll leave it there. This is just not a foundation that is providing like excess moisture to my skin so I don't think I need to powder a lot. Now we got a couple of options here for bronzer slash contour. We have some individual bronzers. Um, they don't look super dark, but yet they, they show up with a little more intensity on the skin and they're like a satin finish. So I have this Tahitian Sun in the Tropics bronzing powder. And then I have this trio, um, this Get Glowing Highlight and Contour palette in light medium. By the way, the packaging of this brand I think is pretty good. You know, it seems very solid. It seems just, you know, know, a little more deluxe than maybe what you'd even expect from like, oh, I'm Dollar General's exclusive brand. I do have kind of a fuller powder brush, which I am going to use with this. I haven't used this one till today. So I'm going to take a little bit of this seemingly more matte bronzer slash contour shade, and I'm going to let some of this come right in this zone. The face powder steps seem really nicely pigmented. The blush, any highlights I've tried, the bronzers, there's a really nice softness to the powders. This brush, honestly, is a little full for my liking. Like, I just, I'm so used to applying with my e.l.f. complexion brush, which is a full brush, but it's a little more pinched in than this. Um, and you also have to be kind of careful. Like, I'm barely dipping into the product because the product is very soft. It's a very soft powder. I'm actually going to go to my e.l.f. complexion brush here real quick just because I'm very confident with it and let that apply around the hairline just to warm things up. Adding a little more in here. See, it's just very, very soft and very easily blendable on the skin. Now I'm going to take some of the more glowy shade, this Tahitian Sun, um, which when I saw it was labeled bronzer and I hadn't yet tried it on my skin, I was like, oh, that's going to be way light, but no, it provides this great little like bronzy veil. Might even come across deeper actually than a Too Faced Sun Bunny type thing, which is surprising, but just has that gentle satin finish that I think is very pretty for a bronzer. And I'm going to let some of this also come kind of under the cheekbone to the top of the cheek area a little bit. In a pinch this could be like a pretty bronzy looking blush. Okay, now I know they sell some individual blushes um, and I was not sent those, but I do have this snippet of blush right here. This is kind of a deep peach shade, which I tend to really like. And again, just a gentle tap in there and I've got plenty on my brush. So we're gonna tap off the excess and apply this. It looks very smooth. It does not really look shimmery. Individual blushes are totally gonna be something I want to investigate going forward from this brand. Love the tone, like plenty of pigmentation with very little actually on my brush. I'm going to take it like, just let it come right across the nose for a more natural 
sun-kissed look. They have two tones of the Contour Trio, and this is the level of intensity we're looking at there for the highlight. It verges on gold, but it's still pretty bright, and it's very metallic. I was able to wear it on my skin yesterday, and once that shears out, like, it's a pretty glow. There's nothing wrong with the way these three products come together, but I want to show you one of the individual highlights. Um, this is called Pop of Pink. It looks very, very just white, but it does have a little, like, ear iridescent pink thing going on there. And there are several other like really pretty highlights that I've been sent that I'm gonna be working into other looks, you know, I'm just one face today. But I'm gonna get a little bit of that on again with the soft powder texture that you're gonna wanna tap off the excess. And it's so nice. Like, look at this. This is like <laughs> the cheapest dupe for that Casey Musgraves pinky highlight look that I was trying to go after that day. Like, I'm really seeing it in person as that blends and buffs and shears out on the skin. You can totally see the pop of pink. It's fun. I love that they have this kind of a shade in their highlighting lineup. And then the other shades, you know, a little more champagne-y, a couple of them a little deeper. But yeah, I dig that. I really think they're on to a very quality texture for the powder stuff. Just to show you, this is the other bronzer shade. So we use Tahitian Sun and this is Havana Sunset. So Havana Sunset, a little bit lighter, more golden. The Tahitian Sun is definitely my favorite there. And then we have three other highlight options that were sent my way. Um, actually, no, two. There were two of the pink pearls sent. My bad, these are the other ones. So one more gold, one is more like, this pink pearls is a little bit more like the softest ever rose gold. Alrighty, let's talk brows. I've got a couple of things. Um, how am I getting so much hair in my face when all this is pulled back. The Brow Defining Pencil, I have it here in Ash Brown, and this is very much like, it's a super soft pencil, but it's not gooping in my brows. Like, hardly any pressure here, okay? Barely holding the thing, and you get a result from it, you know? Feels like a gel-type pencil. It's a really interesting texture for a brow product. And then they also have this kind of, um, I don't know, I guess you'd call it sort of a standard brow kit here, you know, where you've got several shades of powder and a wax and a little brush with spoolie and the angled brush. This works fine as well. Like, it's a decent wax. Three very pigmented colors here in, I think, really good tones. Like, I can totally make that shade work in my brows. This shade, too. This is a little light. But they call that the Universal Brow Kit. So, that's an option as well. I'm going to kind of try to stick to this today so you can really see just what one product is going to do. So, again, super soft glide with this pencil, which I'm not always a fan of because sometimes it just deposits too much. But even though this is very soft. I don't feel like it's putting too much goop in the brow. You know what I mean? If you don't like a lot of tug whatsoever, I think you might really be into this. And it does have the spoolie on the end. And thickness-wise, just a very standard pencil. Picture your most basic eyeliner. That's how wide and thick it is. So just that quick, I've gotten it through. And then I'm going to take my spoolie part of it and really help myself get that all evenly distributed. Because it is a softer product, it will move a little bit. Okay, there we go. I do not feel like I've got any hold, though, happening there much. I think they may sell a brow gel, um, but I don't have that. It's on my list, y'all, for the part two. <laughs> I'm seriously so excited that this is out there and gives people who live in rural areas, only have the Dollar General really handy, you can feel like, yes, I can pick up some quality things there. And it's also just kind of exciting to know that it's just theirs. You know, you're not going to run into this in other stores. Okay, very, very able to move around some of the pencil that was applied that, you know, didn't get just so and sort of shear it out and blend it around with the spoolie. Spoolie is really important, I think, with this pencil. I'm a little concerned about staying power with this because when I've swatched it, the swatches don't really like set. In my brows, it's been fine, but if somebody has like nothing and then they're trying to create something here, I'm wondering if it would be something that could potentially smudge around, you know? Um, I'm going to take the Brow Stylist Boost and Set here. As far as application, I mean, it's a real easy easy product to use. And in the capacity I'm doing where I'm not trying to recreate a brow, but I'm just sort of trying to build up certain areas, even things out left to right. I feel like I'm going to sneeze. Oh my god. 
you know, it gets the job done rather nicely, and that ash brown, very cool brown shade seems to be good in my brows. Now, I do not have an eye primer, so we're gonna use Milani. Milani is just kind of my benchmark, you know. It's gonna have a little tack, but not too tacky, you know. It's gonna even your tone a little bit, but not be intensely opaque. Definitely seems to help the staying power and intensity of anything though, so I love that. The eyeshadow situation is real exciting to me, y'all. We're talking six color palettes, five dollars each. Um, this is the one I was wearing yesterday, this very basic kind of like warmish brown one called Nearly Nude. Loved it, loved my look. Everything came across so smooth. There's gentle sheen in some of these that's totally manageable to be used like up in the crease and I just, I enjoyed the heck out of that. And I think these are all of the shades that are available. We have a purple one that's looking strikingly similar to um, uh, Viseart Amethyst, like that kind of vibe. Not exactly as purpley as that. I mean, we got the one purple shade here, but who else is getting that feeling from just glancing at this? We have this one called Into the Blue. We've got navy in there, frosty baby blue type colors, a gray. And then my friends, this this is what it might have to be today, Golden Disco. This is giving me the fall vibes, but I kind of like just really want to play with this. I really want to do an olive look, so can we do an olive look, please? Yay, okay. Trust me, I'm itching to play with the purple as well, but sometimes I think I overdo with the purple. <laughs> so in my experience using the nudes one the other day, like really soft shadows, again, they found a very consistent powder texture that you see throughout this line. You see it in the bronzer, you see it in the highlight, in the blush, and now, you know, in the eyeshadow. Shadows. It's nice and soft, but not difficult to control at all. And I'm thinking about just like taking a little bit of this light shade, bumping up the inside just a bit. I don't know why I'm going there first today. It's just where my brush went in the palette. It's not crazy intense, but it's not bad. I do kind of want to get something lightly in my crease, and I think I'm going to go for this sort of coppery color. Even though it does have shimmer, I think it'll be just fine at a perfect depth level to get us started before we head in with the green and the gold. I'm probably not gonna bring in a lot of this purple. I might, maybe a lower lash line, we'll see. But yeah, this is my first time using this particular set here. See how much that shears out and see how matte it actually looks when buffed out with a brush like this. Let a little more come in this way like I'm trying to make myself do from time to time. Then I wanna see what this gold is made of. I wanna splash some of this, okay. It's a pronounced gold. I'm gonna let some of that kind of come in, really overlap that lightest color a little bit here for a little gold moment. Sometimes I'm not always a fan of the real you know, yellowy golds, but this one, this one's working for me. Wonder what that would even be like applied with a finger and patted in. The answer there is even more intense. And then I really, just in swatching this, I was letting green overlap the gold a little bit and it looked awesome, so I'm hoping that will translate and also look awesome on the eyes because we've got a couple of olives. We've got softer olive and deep vampy olive. We're gonna start with soft olive and let this come on the outside. First place you put your brush is where the most product goes, and then let it kind of come in to the gold. No offense to LA Colors, but when we think eyeshadow palettes and we think Dollar General, like I'm picturing those little LA Colors palettes that some of them, you know, you, you might run into a few good shades. Some of the little colors are like hard as rocks and smell like old perfume. And now you can go into DG thinking, I want to round up some good quality eyeshadow, and you can. Okay, so there's what I've done. I feel like maybe I will take an additional brush, grab a little bit of the deeper, and let that also come to play on the outside and really outer corner. Any Green Bay Packers fans in the house? Any uh, North Dakota State Bison fans in the house? <laughs> this is your look to rock during football season. Furthermore, I think I'm going to take kind of a mix of the two greens with my small outer corner brush and just allow that, the use of that brush to really shape the outside of the look. It's tough, the colors are pigmented and sometimes you, it's easy to get too much on at once. But I wanna give myself like a real lift in the outside outer corner and then as we finish things, 
Um, I, I'm just blending here with a bare brush, but as we finish things off, I see myself coming in with more copper over the border here. I'm gonna reinforce my gold. And then I think I will take some of that purple just for the lower lash line. And then we will have used everything in the palette. Okay, gonna gently, cause this is not a super light shade here. I'm gonna take a little bit of that copper. Let that come nice and high, really. Transition us out of the green and back into skin mode. And then a little bit of our pearly shade, which this is not world's strongest, like most wonderful highlight, but it's given us some gentle sheen. Now, like I said, just with the finger, I don't think this shade like super requires the finger, but I just know exactly where I want it to go. So the finger can really target it right in the middle of the lid there. And then we're gonna take some of our plum. This was a 100% shimmery quad, y'all. But it was well balanced with dark, medium, and light, and that's why this work, that's why this work is looking. That's why this look is working. Sheared out in this way, I'm, this color is just kind of looking dark, not super purpley. If you really went for full on packing on, like all over the lid, you might see more purple, I suspect. But um, in this way, it's just gonna look kind of dark and smudgy, which is okay. We've got enough razzmatazz on the lid for one day. And then I'm gonna take a little more of the light shade. See if I can't just build right here, which I can, a little more. I'm really liking it. That was a really easy look to pull off. Now friends, we do have a liquid eyeliner. I have it in the shade Midnight Jaguar. And this is, this is not my favorite felt tip liner type deal here. It's very, very classic. Um, you know, I think it's cool that they have a liner pin, but there's really no flexibility in that tip. And I feel like the more evolved liquid liner pins these days just have a little more flexibility, so they just glide across the lash line. Also, I feel like with one pass, sometimes one pass of this looks a little sheer, so you have to kind of double it up a little bit. It's not unworkable and in the end, it can look just as intense as most anything, but you have to build slightly. I think the fact that anytime I've used this, I've had a really full on eyeshadow look. So it's had to kind of go over some very intense shimmers and potentially, you know, be detensified along the way as it goes across the lash line. But I'm giving myself a gentle wing there. But you see what I mean. In the end, you know, gets the job done. Oh man, I forgot the eye brushes. I was just going on using my own. I have these too, and I think this is all they make. They've got a blending brush, um, and then they've got a brush that is a little more like, could pack on the lid, but yet, as I turn it sideways, you can see it's a little bit chunky. You know, it's got a little thickness to it there. It could maybe work some stuff into the crease too. Um, dang it, I meant to use those. But I guess, frankly, neither one is a real, like, great pack-it-on brush. You want something really, really flat for that, like the e.l.f. flat eyeshadow brush. Taking a little bit of the deepest green and just helping that, you know, link up with my black liner, making my black liner make sense a bit more. For lashes, I don't have any of their mascaras. That was another thing I was really hoping to hunt down, but it looks like they make at least three different varieties of mascara. So that'll be something I'm gonna be going for in the future. Also, they make three to four styles of false lashes, and they sent your girl the two most natural styles. Um, so we have Delicate Finish, which looks a lot like um, I don't know, a Salon Perfect 21. Super, super baby lashes there. And then Romantic Finish is maybe just a little bit thicker than that, ever so slightly longer. And I think I'm gonna try the Romantic Finish, but I need to put some mascara on first, so I'm gonna do that. So I've got my mascara on top and bottom, and I finally got the um, Romantic Lashes out of the package. And I'm having real flashbacks to like Elf's first cheapest um, styles of lashes, like these are super flimsy. They're incredibly delicate to get off of the package. Like the lash band and the lashes themselves can become deformed very easily. And they also want to really um, straighten out when you take them off. So you need to spend a little time like 
either before or after you get your glue on, kind of making them flexible, you know. Um, and I did have to trim off a little bit of excess. Also, it seemed like I was sent two rights instead of a left and a right. Like there was a little more flare on the outside of the right eyelash, and then the other looked exactly the same as that. So I don't know. I'm already having a little bit of a questionable take on the falsies. They do make some more dramatic styles and I wonder if the band in general on those might not be quite so delicate or just the whole lash might be a little easier to manipulate and maneuver. But these little ones are like, gosh, be gentle. They're very fragile. I think my glue has gotten a little tacky so I'm going to place this on. Just so lightweight which will be nice for the wear, the wearability of them. I can definitely tell I've gotten more thickness and length though. If you can just get them off of the packaging, and there's the band wanting to straighten out a little bit, I'm gonna have to hold that down. I'm gonna let those sit there and then I'll probably do like one more little coat of mascara over the top just to bond everything together. Meanwhile, for the sake of time, I'm gonna finish this other eye and I'll be back. Got my other lash on. Um, it was pretty uneventful. It was easy. Added a little more mascara on both sides, which makes it all look a little more dramatic. And then we're gonna talk about lip color options here. The brand sent a few lip liners in some very distinct shades. We got like a berry, um, a chocolatey kind of brown, a bright pink. A little selection here of liquid lipsticks. Yesterday I wore the nude. It was a very standard liquid lipstick type experience for me. And then a number of these um, just kind of classic lipsticks. They sent me like a couple of rosy pink type shades and then a whole lot of reds. Very basic experience with those. Like I don't think they're anything like off the wall amazing, but they don't suck either. Also very little fragrance to anything in this line, which I think is a good thing. I'm thinking about taking one of these lip shades that I have, maybe this one called Vintage Romance. These lipsticks. Very opaque, um, but a standard cream lipstick, which, you know, I definitely think is hands down going to be more comfortable than the liquid lipstick. May not last as long, although I wasn't all that impressed with the nude that I used the other day. I don't know how I feel about that mixing with the olive eye, but I, I don't really mind it. I wonder if I take this um, long... Oh, this is an eyeliner. Dang, okay, I didn't realize I had a brown eyeliner. I was just assuming that was like a chocolatey lip liner or something. Almost all my other lip shades are very, very reddish. You know what, what the heck? I'm gonna take a little bit of that shade. I just want to like ever so slightly neutral it up some, you know? They probably make a brownish lip liner shade that honestly isn't too far off this formula wise, so all I'm doing is applying a little bit of the color on the outer part of my lips, and then my memory card decided to cut out on me. Sometimes I feel like my memory card is my arch nemesis. Like, yeah, I'll do the job you want me to do, but not without a little bit of hassle. It's like, are you trying to hint to me that this video might be too long, memory card? Just gave the lips a little dimension, took the edge off the pink just slightly there. They just didn't send a lot of neutrally stuff and also I don't have any lip glosses. That's another thing I really want to investigate from this line. But yeah, the only things I would do here now at the end is add a little more blush because that's just, that's what I do. So let's do that. Loving the powder textures here. Woo. And then let's just go taking some of this shade that's right next door here. And just let a little bit of that glow come right on top. I'm doing it very diffused-like with this blush brush. Now who wants the satisfaction of seeing hot rollers come out and fast forward? Yay! Sometimes you just gotta kick it up for a special occasion, like when a new brand gets released at Dollar General. I'm not even laughing at that. That really does excite me. Oh, hi. That's the finished look. Um, overall, really excited about this. I mean, I think it was evident during the video how excited I am about the fact that an exclusive brand is at Dollar General now. Um, nothing is over $5. I think that's great. Also, I'm happy to report that nothing like glaringly disappointed the heck out of me, like except 
maybe the lashes like those were really hard to get off of the little packaging and once I did they seemed so delicate and kind of hard to work with. Outside of those nothing super disappointed me here. I think there are strengths and I think there are some things that are just kind of okay. Um, things in the just kind of okay category might be the foundation for me. I mean it worked well and it lasts pretty well without me getting oily but it wasn't doing anything super outstanding. It wasn't giving me a lot of radiance. It's just kind of like your classic super basic matte foundation. And for $5, I guess you are kind of saving some when you look across the board at what prices of foundations in the drugstore are these days. You know, it's going to be double and maybe a little more than that. So I think these are good. They're just not blowing my mind. Um, I still have yet to try, you know, concealer and powder. Those are big factors of a makeup look that I really want to test. What else was just kind of okay for me, dog? Didn't love the eyeliner. Didn't love the liquid liner. Um, the brow product, it went in very easily, but again, I got a bit of a staying power concern with this because like even the swatch on my hand, it didn't really set up. I'm concerned for people who are relying on this to recreate a brow that it might actually smear around a little. The lip products, it's kind of a situation I think where if you find a shade that appeals to you, go for it. Nothing's going to really be glaringly disappointing. The cream lipstick, you know, is fine. Liquid lipsticks, they are what they are. You know, they are going to dry out your lips somewhat. It's doing what just about any liquid lipstick would do. I'm really interested to try a lip gloss though. That could be a product that I turn out to absolutely love. We'll see. But the strengths, the biggest points here for me have really come with the powder products. I think they have a great powder texture going on. Like the stuff in this little um, contouring palette I thought worked really well. It was nice and soft. A little fallout that you're going to want to tap off your brush but not like overwhelmingly so. And the same deal for the eyeshadows too. You know there's a softness with this formula and it carries through everything. I really like this Tahitian Sun bronzer. Also very impressed with the highlighter and eyeshadow wise I still need to experiment with my blue and purple little sex tuplet set. But I can tell you right now I really loved the nude. It's nearly nude is what that's called. I enjoyed that so much because it's a nice kind of matte shimmer mix in here. This one today you know was all shimmer but I kind of love you know the different tones that were offered there. It's a little bit of an off the beaten path palette to just find you know at Dollar General. I feel like they're advancing things a little bit from what you would expect and for five bucks I mean those are great eyeshadows. The brushes they make, um, my favorite one was probably the one I used for the foundation. This will continue to stay in the rotation. Very much enjoyed the way that buff things in. Powder brush is fine, it's just a little large for my liking. I think for more basic eyeshadow looks um, these two brushes could actually be good. I mean there is nothing at all wrong with the blending brush. It's plenty soft. It reminds me of the eye brushes Milani has come out with, you know? Even the look is so much like that. And I think this one would be fine for a quick shadow all over the lid, a little bit into the crease. But as you can see, what we were doing with today's look was a little bit more like, I want this shade here and this shade here and pack it on. Um, if you really want to pack it on, you need something flatter. But overall, this is exciting stuff. Um, to be continued, I'm going to be trying more. But thank you for your time. Let me know if you have tracked this down in your Dollar General yet and um, what you've tried, what you like. Overall, I think it's really impressive stuff. And you know, I feel very glam today with my Dollar General makeup on. So thank you for watching, guys, and I will see you again soon. Bye. Hey guys, it is almost 11 o'clock, so I'm about to pick up Belle from pre-K, and that means this look has been on for about six hours now already. And as you can see, everything's really hanging in there. I do not look or feel shiny with this foundation on, which I definitely didn't expect to. Um, this little lash, well, is that just the lash or is it coming up in the corner? Maybe that's just the eyelash there. I think I'm okay. Um, but even the lip color is kind of hanging in there a little bit better than I expected it would. The curl in my hair has certainly dropped a lot, but there's some humidity in the air, so I'm not surprised. Anyway, I feel like we're looking good six hours in. Okay, gang, here we are with the DG look. Um, at nearly 12 hours of wear, um, again with the foundation. I know I've been touching my face this afternoon. Oh, it's really raining outside. I know I've been messing a little bit, but I think maybe you can tell that I'm not very oily. When I am, certain foundations, like you'll definitely know it. You'll see it across my nose, and I don't look too bad in that respect. My lash is coming up a little for sure now. Um, again, the lash band, um, while it was very like delicate, 
delicate, it wanted to stay super straight. So I'm not really surprised by that. I haven't even done anything else with my lips, but I've got just a hint of something going on there. That wore a lot longer today than I thought it would. Biddy says she needs my help in there, so I better go assist. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you soon. Bye-bye.